Our second reading is taken from Volume 2 of the Treatise on the Love of God by St. Francis de Sales from Book 7, the closing part of Chapter 8. A young girl on the island of Sestos once raised an eaglet with all the care children are wont to employ in such concerns. When the eagle had grown large, it began little by little to fly and to hunt birds according to its natural instincts. Then as it got stronger, it began to seize wild beasts, never failing to bring home its prey faithfully to its clear, to its dear mistress, in acknowledgement of the nurture it had received from her. Now it happened that one day the young girl died, while the poor eagle was out hunting, and according to the custom of the time and country, her body was publicly placed on a funeral pyre to be burnt. Just as the flames began to seize the body, the eagle came back on its great sweeping wings. Seeing this sad, unlooked for sight, it was pierced with grief, loosened its claws, cast aside its prey, and threw itself over its poor dear mistress. Covering her with its wings, as though to defend her from the fire or to embrace her out of pity, it stayed there firm and unmoving and bravely died and was burnt up with her. The heat of its affection could not give way before the fiery flames and heat, so that it became the victim and holocaust of its noble, prodigious love, just as its mistress was the victim of death and flames. Teotimus, how that other eagle causes us to soar aloft! The Saviour has nourished us from our tender youth. Yes, like a loving nurse, he formed us and took us into the arms of his divine providence from the instant of our conception. He has made us his own by baptism, and he tenderly nourishes us both in body and in soul with an, with an incomprehensible love. To bring us life, he has suffered death. He had fed us with his own flesh and with his own blood. Ah, oh, what remains for us? What further conclusion must we draw, my dear Tautimus, except that they who are alive may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them? That is, we should consecrate every moment of our life to the divine love of our Saviour's death. To His glory we must bring home all our prey, all our conquests, all our works, all our act actions, all our thoughts, and all our affections. Teotimus Behold the Divine Redeemer stretched upon the cross as on a pyre of honour. On it he dies for love of us, but with a love more dolorous than death itself, or by a death more loving than love itself. Ah, why do we not cast ourselves in spirit upon him, to die upon the cross with him, 
who for love of us has truly willed to die. If we have the eagle's generous spirit, we must say, I will hold him and I will never let him go. I will die with him. I will burn within the flames of his love. The same fire shall consume the divine creator and his base creature. My Jesus is all mine and I am all his. I will live and I will die upon his breast. Neither death nor life shall ever separate me from it from him. Thus then the holy ecstasy of true love is accomplished when we live no longer according to human reason and inclinations, but above them, according to the inspirations and promptings of the divine Saviour of our souls. Here ends our third reading.